Are you ready? You see me squeeze my six chins to hold my breath for you? I was trying, but a bunch of stuff popped up on my screen. I'd click off it all real oh, quick. Oh, stupid. I thought I was waiting for you to interrupt me. Now I was trying. Trust me. Oh, man. Welcome to this episode of So Much Genergy. Get it together. That was kind of like the Muppets and Fraggle Rock. All that was a little one. bit of both. Little both. <laughs> Picture doozers. <laughs> Those are my favorite. But they were up in the balcony at Muppet Show. You know what I'm talking? Yeah. That'd like be funny. Combination. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, good stuff. All nice. right. Welcome back, Jeff Jones. Good to have you here. How, Jen, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah. Are you all meditated out? No, Jen. Believe it or not, oh. just getting started. Okay. I know you've been cracking up all week about it. So all even... week, Jen. Yeah. All week. Yeah. Uh well, what's up with that? Good stuff? Yep. Coming up this week, we have okay. uh how to take your honey do list and turn it into your new hobby. Okay. Honey yep, that's do. coming up. Honey do. And hopefully you don't get stung. By bees, like we were just talking about. Just talking about we it. Hit just record. Both had bee encounters this weekend. Oh man, they're out this year. They're out for the vengeance. Yeah, like I thought there was a shortage, and now there's not. I know. I heard that too, and that really, at the time, it bummed me out. And I read this whole article about why it's important to have bees, and like, you yeah, know I mean, if bees right. disappear, it's only a matter of time until we do. Yeah, was the gist <laughs> of the article. Right. And I was thinking, like, man, we kind of need bees, but you know what? I had a bee encounter, two bee encounters last week. I had one yesterday. Hmm. I think Maybe they're rising up, rising up out of the ground. Well, armies. I just had one. I don't know if he was waiting like a ninja or what, but I put on long pants, long shirt, because I apparently touch something in the backyard all the time and then break out like I have rigor mortis on my flesh. So I suit up and then go out there with the pole saw. Next thing I know, it feels like I'm stepping in a picker bush. Nope. B. Well, yellow jacket. I don't know I don't, why he had the, a yellow jacket. I know. I was going to say, well, I don't know what the significance of his clothing is. Ever, ever, you'd think he would have had on an orange jacket here in Tennessee. Everything's orange. Yeah. Orange jacket. But he was so mad. He stung me like four times. Yep. Yeah. He's a, he, apparently you know, he was out. I'm the outside day. of my pants. It was bad. Yeah. I just come in. Slap some baking soda and water on it, and finally the swelling, the rigor mortis went down. Baking soda, mm -hmm. like fried bacon soda, carbonated no, baking bacon. soda. Oh, I thought you said baking soda. I did well, because I, I didn't like, express the G. I meant bacon soda, like carbonated no. <laughs> bacon drink. Oh, remember that they did have that here when you were yeah. here at yeah, the candy that shop. Gross. That was disgusting with that ranch. Was ranch oh pop. stop oh. just <laughs> stop that is this ranch soda <laughs> anyways what's up with dad we were talking today and we we're yep. you know, hooking up with the podcast and then yeah dad i almost calls. called you right back i had to get off the phone because dad was calling and i know when he's calling it's something crucial important yeah. dire no, it's not you're about nope. to get yelled at about something that he something. feels is emergency yep so what he, he calls and he's like hey uh, working on the cornhole out here. I go, all right, what you need? And he's like, I was calling to let you know, I picked up four new white tables, like tables to put them on. Oh, okay. He's like, I know you don't like uh, having to use all the, what are they? The folding tables, the card tables. Yeah. He goes, I know you don't like all the card tables. I goes, mom's standing by you. And he's like, no, she's upstairs. I go, he's like, why? I go, I feel like you're just saying that in front of mom. I, you know, I like the card tables. <laughs> I go, I like them. Cause you can get all the way around them. I right. go, when you get those long tables, you can only put two boards and he puts two boards next to each other. You can't get all the way around right. individually. Yeah. So you're, if I'm helping him put screws in or doing whatever, I'm reaching all the way in between them. I don't like that. Yeah. So I go, I, I go, did you tell mom I don't like them? And he's like, well, I just know you, you're not a big fan of them. I go, oh. you, you're not a big fan of them. I go, did you tell mom that so that you can get new tables? Cause he'll tell mom things like, oh, Jeff says we need to get a better saw. Yeah. And so he can go out and get a saw. And, and it had mom, nothing to do yep. with you. Then mom, I'll come over and mom be like, oh, we got that new saw. Look at this. 
And I go, oh, that's cool. You know, and she's like, oh, aren't, you know, dad said you wanted this one. I go, I never said that. <laughs> so dad, he starts out complaining about his saw. And then by the time he's done complaining, he suggests he needs a new saw. Right. And then whether he has you to ag- justify yep, the purchase. whether you agree with him or not, you are then th- an accomplice and thrown into the story. <laughs> even if you're like, even if I say, dad, you don't need a new saw. Nothing's wrong with this one. Well, Jeff's not a big fan of it. I need a new <laughs> saw. I never said that. That's the opposite of anything I have said up to this point about the I saw. Was, I was supportive of the saw you have. Keep this saw. Right. But the cool thing is, is since he doesn't need, since he got new tables, guess who gets his old ones, Jen? Ugh. This guy. Because we ain't shipping them all the way down that's, to Tennessee. That's your consolation prize for getting blamed. Yep. So dad got us cool. new tables to put his cornhole boards on. Okay. That is like two uh, I don't levels know a corn away from table. me. My, the cornhole table I'm used to is different. It's called the doctor. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> Speaking of doctor, this right nothing to do with doctor. Okay. But the other day at work, you, I was, what, what was I doing? I was moving something and I reach over. Oh, no. Yeah, I was moving stuff. But then the way I was bent, I mule kicked the garbage can. Like, oh. yeah, like, bam, <laughs> mule kick it. Because the way I was bent over by the desk, and I needed to also, like, when after I set some stuff under there, needed to move the garbage can back. Right. The big shop can. And I was already down under there. So I, and I mule kick it. And I, right when I stood up, I had a Charlie horse in my butt cheek, like in the butt cheek. I could not, I was laughing. One, because the mule kick, and two, a, I couldn't even move my leg because of the pain in my butt. It was right in one cheek, the right side. The guy at work's like, why are you standing like that? Oh, man, I got a Charlie horse, I think, right in my butt cheek right now. And he's like, you're dehydrated. That means you need to drink more water. You shouldn't be mule kicking on an empty stomach or something like that. I'm like, what the hell? I just had nothing to do with the mule kick. He's like, if you didn't mule kick, you probably wouldn't have a Charlie horse. Hmm, maybe. 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 Oh, man. Woo. Oh, yeah. Charlie horse right in the. You right in the. Yeah. Bud talks. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. This is also funny real quick about it. And then the guy at work was telling me that his buddy, his best friend and his wife were over there having a bonfire, right? His buddy goes to pop. You ever seen someone pop a beer top, like just a beer bottle with a cigarette lighter, right? Right. He goes to do that (laughs) and he pops it and bam, hit him right in his eye. Oh, caught it right in the eye. So then he goes to that doctor's the next morning. They give him an eye patch, right? He comes back over like three days later. Of course, my buddy's razzing him about having the eye patch on. Yeah. And just his depth perception and everything's off. And he should only be drinking half the amount of beer and everything. (laughs) He goes, he goes, the buddy with the eye patch goes to pop open another beer with his lighter. And he's like, whoa, give me that. He goes, he goes, what did he say? You can't lose another eye. I believe you around here blind. So my buddy busts it, uh, pops the top. Top comes off, cut him right in his (gasps) neck. Oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> I don't know. Can't even make that up. She so, took one yeah. for the team. Yep. He almost contemplated going and getting stitches over it, which I don't know. He probably could have. I mean, I oh think I'd God. have thrown two or three in there. Yeah. Sure. But if you want to scar a cool story, I guess I jazz that story up some though. He should did he super glue it? No, I'm not. No, he just put oh. a band-aid over it and oh. packed it with like A&D ointment or whatever. Dang, Sam. Anything I said, I'd say it happened. Chinese star, you were taking garbage out. Ninja come out of the shadows, hit right. you with a shuriken. Yeah. He fell over a kelp trap, <laughs> caught it in the neck, got out of there before he pulled out the nunchucks. Best case scenario. Yeah. Instead of a lame bottle top. Yep. I jazz that story up some. Right. Tetanus. Did yep. he get a tetanus? Sh- oh, he probably should have had a tetanus shot after that. Probably should have. Yeah. I would have got one beer well, top. I don't know. That's probably not the most maybe. sanitary of things. Probably not. You're risky. Seems risky. Yeah. Oh man. Another, so, oh, real quick. One oh, more yeah. thing happened this week. Took the yeah. kids to a concert. Uh-huh. See mustard plug at the okay. in Ferndale. It's a ska band. You listen to ska music, like horn oh, music. No, only when Gwen Stefani was in. Well, okay. That's yeah. loosely ska, but it's ska yeah. is more like punk with horns. Yeah. Even if you have a trumpet, you right. could still be have a ska band. Okay. I haven't seen a band, Mustard Plug, great band from Grand Rapids. It's probably the seventh or eighth time I've seen them. Yeah. But Buddy asked if I wanted to go. 
bought a couple extra tickets because we thought two of our other buddies were going to go. They didn't go. That fell through. Wife was already going with us. So we took the kids because it was mm-hmm. all ages. Okay. Like, yeah, the kids will have fun. We get there. My youngest, first off, on the way there, he thought we were going to a stadium. Like we were going to see like oh. Bon Jovi or Kiss or something. Oh, I don't no. know what he was thinking. But we, on the is way this there, his first concert? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. His, this will be his first. This is what was his first concert. Yeah. And, uh, but the oldest one last weekend went to a heavy metal concert at St. Andrews. Okay. Got in the mosh pit and everything. Had a killer time. Talked about it all week. Yeah. So the youngest was amped up to see a concert. I think also he can only, most live shows, concerts that I think he's ever come across in his life has probably been a fairly big arena show. Sure. Like that you see videos and whatnot. Yeah. Of, nobody sees a video of like Adele in a bar. I right. say my kid listens to Adele, but whatever yeah. he listens to. Yeah. So we got on the way there and he's like, oh, are we going where the Lions play? <laughs> what? Port Field? No, man. So we're going to a bar over in Ferndale. Yeah. So it's about two, two or three of Papa's garages. It's about yeah. that big. <laughs> it's not very big. Yeah. You know, like it's probably the same height ceiling. Right. And he's like, really? Why do we go see a bar? I go, trust me. We get there. First, there was four bands playing. First two, three were decent. They were all right. You know what I mean? I'd hear them yeah. again. My kids stood by the wall most of the time. We kind of just got in there with the crowd, this and here and there. But then as soon as mustard plug, before they came out, we all moved forward. And the kids were like, nah, we're going to kind of hang back here by the wall. We're good on this. And then as soon as the concert started, we're all fucking right in there in the skanking in the pit. Yeah. It's like a mosh pit, but it's just a bunch of dancing and pushing okay. and shoving and dancing. Mostly yeah. like 80% dancing, 20%. You'll catch an elbow at the same time. Okay. A lot of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so a buddy of mine, me get up there, you know, and we bam, we get right up to the to the front part, far up as we could to the little rail. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, we're right there. It's not even a railing. It was actually just the edge of the stage. It was that small of a place. Yeah. And so we're right there. And all of a sudden our buddy Billy's behind us, you know, and then Andrea comes up there and we're all skanking up there. And there's a small part between the songs. And I look over and the youngest was about 12, 15 feet away from me. And just out there right in the middle, just going at it, just skanking throwing Whoa. elbows having a blast and yeah he, he wasn't even like it just was he was in pure bliss <laughs> well then he worked his way over to me and he's like dad i go oh my god i was so psyched to just be like skank pitting yeah. with my youngest <laughs> and then the oldest come over he was sweating up a storm so he would he had been out there somewhere i didn't see him prior to that but he yeah. comes over and i go hey let's throw him up on top like throw him up yeah crowd surf you know and i like no 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 i'm like all right then sl- uh stops between songs and they kind of fade back i thought they were going back to the wall catch a breath this and that next song comes on we're going about a minute and a half into it billy taps me on the shoulder he's like a six and a half foot tall buddy of ours uh-huh. he looks over and he's like is that your kid and i look over and about maybe 10 15 feet that way m goes by crowd surfing <laughs> and this kid he looked like a turtle on his back you know what I mean? Because he's only about four feet tall. Right. But you could see it in it, the way he was just pumping his fists and legs that he was just in pure heaven. Oh, my God. At a sky show. Yeah. How yep. to go oh, after. Good. Like, Those... Was he just like talking about it all night? The whole way home. Yep. Then on the yeah. way home, we were like, man, we're starving. This is funny. We started driving through this part. I don't even know where we were because I wasn't driving. I was actually in the back seat at this point. Yeah. And, uh, M points out, he's like, are we in an 8-bit video game? We're like, what are you talking about? We went past a, past a place called Karate. I don't know what M had seen prior to that, but when we looked over, the stores said Karate. The next one said Noodle. The next one said Crab. They were all one-word stores of just what they... And then we seen Karate was the first one we all noticed. We were laughing about that. This went on. It, it was, oh, man. Vacuum was another one these places had no business names they just had marquees of what they sold or okay. did okay oh it my. looked like a very generic video game for a good two miles we were laughing and at the very end kung fu so oh. it started with karate <laughs> and it ended with kung fu and it was we were There's laughing the whole time sandwich. it was like a double dragon video game Whoa. or something from like nintendo it was so basic looking it was hilarious and it was funny. like 1 30 in the morning so nobody's out yeah but we had heading to Rochester because we seen there was a Coney Island that was 24 hours. We're like, sweet. So we go that way. It took us about 50 minutes to get there. Get there, carry out only. Oh. 24 hours, carry out only. Oh, no. So we look it up. McDonald's. We're all like, oh, man, McDonald's sucks. But well, all right. You know, by this point, it was like 2, 2.30. We're like, all right, we'll hit a McDonald's. It's 24 hours. Go yeah. there. Nope. Closed. Oh. 
Yep. We decided hit the gas station on the way home. Yeah. Yep. Beef jerky and Pepsi for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know really. That's not what we got. I got Chex Mix. Yeah. Chex Mix in a soda. Yep. That's funny. But yeah. No, that was a great time. Yep. Kids have talked about it since then. Good times. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we went to uh, Ohio. I went to Ohio with Shannon and Cooper and they had a, um, our friend Jen told us about a place called Jungle Gyms. All right. And it sounds like an amusement park. Right. And it kind of is, but it's a grocery store. Oh. Which I know sounds super weird, but they have like, it's almost like a Ollie's, all these Bass Pro liquor store all in one. And it's the biggest thing we've ever been to. We were there for two hours. Then we had to run to his appointment and then we still weren't done. So we came back. We were there for probably another two hours. What's what's the amusement park aspect of it? Like there's giraffes and stuff outside, like plastic okay. and like yep. gorillas and stuff. Like Are they it has on the a roof? Theme. Are they on um, the roofs? Nope. Nope. I know what you're talking about. That's we the go by flea a- market part. But okay. No, nope, all right. They're out in the front and then they have like throughout the store, they had like a big uh Campbell's soup can on a swing, like on the top of everything. But that's like yep. And they were like, oh, you don't even, have you even been upstairs? We didn't even go upstairs. Shannon's like, we got to come back. Like, we got to come back yep. and make it a trip. It was I've so got, yeah. crazy cool. Oh, and they had all the pops there. Like, I'm not talking like drinking pops. I'm talking like pops that Griff collects. Like Funko Pops? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like man. All vinyl characters? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah, like random, random stuff. Heck yeah. Good time. It times. was so awesome. I mean, we were there forever. Got Christmas gifts. It was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And then they had an ice cream store in there. They had a podcast recording studio in there. They what? had, um, when we went to the ice cream store, she's like, here, try our cinnamon, cinnamon ice cream. I'm like, that's kind of weird. Just cinnamon. She's right. like, yeah, it tasted. She said it tastes just like cinnamon toast crunch melted in the milk. You know what oh, I mean? Like yep. when it gets all like soggy in the milk. She said it tastes like that. And that's exactly what it tasted like. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. Frozen cinnamon toast crunch milk. Nice. It was so good. Yeah. Um, mm. So wanted to share that little ice cream information with you there. Oh, then, um, ew, you know, how, like you do something and you don't realize like how inappropriate it is till you do it. You right. know what I mean? So like I was talking to Cooper and Shannon, they're sitting across from us at breakfast, which this place was called like hangover easy. And it was, Oh my God. It was funny. Cause Cooper wanted a shirt, you know, he's only like 11, but it was hangover easy. So it was ho. And they were like, <laughs> get, get your, like they had ho fries and yep. <laughs> So it was so funny. And Shannon's like, you can't have a shirt like that. <laughs> um, nice. I just said ho on the top of it. And um, so I'm talking to him about like the um, churning butter. There's a place over here that, you know, they have like the in the olden days, like the old country times. Yep. And they have like reenactments when you go to this museum. Right. And so I start going like this is the churning <laughs> butter churning. And he's like, Johnny McKinney, put your hands down. What are you shake shake waiting? He's like, you are not appropriate right now. And like, I was mortified because I just did it twice. You know what I mean? To like show him. And then I like, didn't even think about it. You know, oh, it was embarrassing. Nice. Yeah. And then we were listening to um, (laughs) like different things on the way back from the trip. And this one comedian, I can't even think what his name was, but he said that uh, he found out Dave Thomas was adopted, like Dave Thomas from Wendy's. Right. And he's like, that's a biological mother that's kicking herself in the ass. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh, that's terrible, terrible. So that cracked me up. And then um, I saw this other guy post that uh, on Facebook that he was going to the butterfly um house right and he said i'm gonna put orange juice on my hands before i go so everyone thinks i'm magic so all the butterflies start <laughs> they come <laughs> fluttering in on them keeping orange rinds in my pocket all right oh man 
Um, nice. So I did three comedy shows this weekend at a new comedy sh- place here in Bristol, Virginia. So Bristol, okay. Tennessee and Virginia are in the same area. Just the right. state line runs down it. And I had two shows on Saturday and then one show last night. The show last night, I took the meditation drum. Meditation drum made its debut at the comedy show last night. They were nice. cracking up. Yep. Hilarious. I wrote new material on the way there and just spewed it out when I got there, and it was a hit. Excellent. Yeah. It was great. It was so great. So, yeah. You got pep in your step this week? Jen, I do. Um, there's a show that was on Netflix, and I tried to get my kid to watch it. Actually, like maybe two, three weeks ago, the wife and I okay. sat down. I think I may have even mentioned it on here. And we watched the trailer to it. And I'm like, oh, man, that looks good. I'd watch that. <laughs> well, nope, she just moved on. Then we watched like four more trailers. Eventually, what we do is we spend about a good hour watching trailers. Yeah, until I doze and no off. show. Yep. Right. It is what it is. Yeah. But she didn't want to watch the show. But then it stuck with me. And like a couple of days later, the youngest and I were looking for something to watch. And we were going to watch some horror movies. I go, hey, let's watch this show, Squid Game. And him oh, and I watched the trailer. I saw the commercial for it. Yeah. Him and I watched the trailer and he's like, no, that's not that good. I don't feel like I don't want to invest my night into that. Yeah. He's like, I'm watching too many other shows. He just wanted to watch a movie. Okay. Like, well, I'm it's still. So the next day I started it. Right now I'm on season five. He's already watched the whole thing, season one, twice. He said it's his favorite show on Netflix, which up to this point has been Stranger Things or Castlevania. Yeah. So, and I like both of those things. So I know this has to be pretty good. And I was already starting it. I was about two episodes in when he started and yeah. he just, he just watched the whole, it's only, I think eight, nine episodes. Okay. He watched the whole thing twice already. Dang. One week. It's like a part-time job. Right. I That's know. crazy. I'm on episode five squid game. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. Okay. It is good. It's what would you like, compare it to? Okay. Uh, it's like saw meets kids games it's like oh maybe not so much saw but it's kind of it's along them lines it's not as dark it's almost happy happier than saw okay but it's made over in south korea it's a south korean show it's actually the first show to get syndicated to this extent oh wow out of korea yeah yeah cool yep no it's really it's i like it i liked it when i seen the trailer a bit ago you know it just seemed like a good like i'd watch that yeah it's subtitled or no it's dubbed over sorry so it, it is in Korean language, but it's dubbed over American voices, but okay. they're done really well. Yeah. Like they're still like, you could tell like these voices were done by people in a studio acting sure. just yeah. like they were on the show. Oh, wow. Yep. Good, sh- good show though. I like it. Cool. That's awesome. Yep. Um, what do I have this week? I don't know this week. I've been, I started a new book I'm excited about called Brain Fitness. Start um, reading it or writing it? Reading. Yep, she's just reading this one, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, what was I thinking about today about being in dad's will? There was something I <laughs> I was thinking about I like, that. I, I was like, like that we bring it up all the time. Yeah, I know, but oh, I was like, ooh, much. this is going to get me up a notch in the will, I think. I'm pretty sure. Probably using a pole saw. You probably sent him a picture of you using the pole oh, yeah. saw outside. I should have. Dang it. Uh, I can't think about what it was, but this book called brain fitness and it's how to tap into your creativity. I didn't get to that part yet, but it's talking about how the brain actually works and is functioning and how he became a neurosurgeon, okay. but it's pretty cool. It's, uh, did I tell you about it before? Nope. No. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, he wanted to be a heart surgeon and then he moved over to neurosurgery and it's pretty cool. They're talking about how the doctor that developed where they took a piece, you know, somebody's skull open mm-hmm. and then they, he tapped on certain things in her brain while she was awake and he asked her where she could feel it and what was going on. And then he mapped the whole thing out. And even to this day, they still use it. That's the map. Like he did it once. And then that's the map he mapped. That's what we're going by. Yeah. He mapped the brain activity. And it just happens to be the same for everybody. Yeah. No doubt. Yep. So That's where he touched certain points and then who's um, the author of that? Is that Oliver Sacks? Who is that? Nope. Hang on. Hang on. I got it right here. Uh, let's see. Rahul Jandile. Oh, okay. Neuro yep. fi- oh, oh, did there I say he brain is. Fitness? Oh, I said, yeah. Neural fitness. 
Yep. But it's a brain surgeon secrets to boost performance and unleash creativity. Because I was nice. wondering, like, if you're having, like, if you get stuck, like, how does your brain get unstuck? And then I was right. just, so I'm not to that part yet, but I'll, I'll figure it out. Nice. Yeah. I'm super jazzed about that. Heck yeah, yeah. You should be. Yeah. And then, uh, if all goes well with your week, we'll have another episode of men. Yep. 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 Friday and this season. Th- that's episode three. Episode right? three. Yep. Three. Right after, uh, how to add more action or add yeah, action. how to add more yep. action. Yep. Not okay. just a, yeah. Yeah, good Way stuff. Right, yep. right. It's hilarious. God, I'm guys in the studio crack me up. Yeah. That's well, I know you have to go mow your half mowed lawn. So. I do, Jen. Thanks for calling it that. You yeah. know, I only I mowed half. I'm going to do the other half, or else the other half will grow too quick. Then I got to do it the all lawn again. Twice on set. What's today? Yeah, Saturday. I mowed it twice, and it already looks like it's not even been done. Well, it's probably you mow it on like five or six. Like your blade's probably too high. Well, I mow it high to leave it thick. No, I, I don't mow cut mine it short. Down. Yeah, cut it down. I don't butch it. You don't, don't have to like butch it, but cut it. it short enough. It should be short enough that a ball can roll across it. I don't uh-uh. know if I'm gonna be out there playing bocce, croquet. You know how many things we do out in that yard? If it's too long. Well, I'm... obviously not on a mower. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> keep it up. Keep it up. Yeah. That's what you get for not interrupting me at the beginning like normal. Okay, bye.